Hello and welcome back to the Linux Panic YouTube channel. This is video two of my new Linux from scratch series, uh, where we go over the stable LFS version 11.2 from Linux from scratch. Last time we left off, we had just finished with the uh, chapters one through four, where we go through the process of getting the system set up, adding the users and setting all the variables up, so all that. So now we need to go on to compiling the cross tool chain. It is in this chapter, it shows us how to build a cross compiler and the associated tools needed. Although cross compilation here is faked, the principles are the same for a real cross tool chain. And the programs compiled in this chapter will be installed under LFS tools, which we're going to need a directory to keep them separate from the files instead of the files installed in the following chapters. So the first thing we need to do is we need to cd into sources, lfs slash sources, and we need to extract the bin utils. Uh, well, we need to extract bin utils tables. So to do that, we do tar hyphen xvf bin utils and wait for that to finish extracting. And we go into bin utils. We have to read through this. This is requiring of us to create a build directory with the documentation. Recommends building bin utils in a dedicated build directory. We can do that. We enter the directory and we need to paste this in. This will set up a make file configuration. So we, so when we come to make it, it's just going to read from the make file and we don't have to enter in all of the make flags. Now, in the last video, we spoke about standard build units, and this one is a one SBU, which means this is the benchmark for all the other packages that are built. So if this package takes one minute to build and we come across a package that is 10 standard build units, it'll then take 10 minutes to build. So that's the SBUs are just a guideline of how long a package could take to make. But uh, currently in the uh, bin utils build directory, as is recommend, as is required from us, we need to copy this, paste this in. This will go through the process of making the make file, which it has done, and then it is just as simple as time make minus j4. And the reason why I'm running minus j4 is it will then use the four calls that are assigned to the system to make the package. And the time thing I put in front will just record and show us how long the, it took to build the package. Because if we don't put the time there, it's not going to show us how long it took. And from there, we can then figure out how long things should take. It does actually recommend running the first thing, or running the first package with time. And it just says, hey, put time, then a curly bracket before the configure, and then the curly bracket after the configure. That way, you can re record the time and also do the configuration in one script. But because we don't need to do it in one script, everything's fine. So now we just have to wait for this to finish. This took a total of 45 seconds. So whenever I run a, whenever I build a package with the make flag minus J4 in the future, it'll be a, it'll be a, an edit, well, a size of 45. It will be a multiplication of 45 of in some form or another. But now that we've made it, we need to install it. So it's just make install. And let's put it in the correct place. In this case, tools directory. Problem solved. So now that we've done that, we're going to do clear. Leave the directory. So I'm going to cd dot dot slash dot dot. rm hyphen r bin utils. The reason why we need to remove these is to prevent any conflicts later on down the line when it comes to running the same package or building the same package a few times over. Because bin utils is one of those packages that needs to be built multiple times, as you can see here by pass one, it's just standard practice to remove all the files at all the directories once you're done. As we can see here, this is a standard build unit of 12, so this should take me at most six minutes. Well, in the ballpark of at least six minutes. But what we need to do is we need to 
extract the GCC directory with GCC tab all, and we can do that with GCC. Hit tab, that's going to go through and extract everything. It just has a required disk space of 3.8 gigabytes. Now that it's done that, we need to enter the, di enter the directory. We need to copy and paste this because this is just changing the name. It's extracting and changing the name of some tables. Hit enter. As we can see here, it wanted to change uh, MPFR, GMP, and MPC, the decimalization after it, to MPFR, GMP, and MPC. As we can see, MPR, GMP, MPFR, GMP, and MPC change without any bothers. This will change the x86 64 bit hosts to the direct default directory name for the 64 bit libraries to lib. Do that. This requires us to have a, a dedicated build directory. So again, nothing. Again, it's something we can do without any bother. This is a long configuration file. So we could time how long it could take to do this, but we're not going to. We're just going to sit and wait for it to finish. But again, it took, well, it was instant. We don't have to worry about that. Now, because this is a 12 standard build unit, this will take a bit of time. So I will stop the recording and start again once we are back. So we're just going to do time, make minus J4. And I will join you once we are done. Okay, now that we have finished with the compilation, we now need to install it. And we do that with make install. This doesn't need any call switches, but it'll just go and install everything as standard as needed. And then the final thing we need to do is just copy and paste this in. This is just going to make sure that some header files aren't messed around with. That'll be fine. So once we've done that, we leave the directory, remove the directory. So it's rmgcc, rm-r even, gcc. Remove the directory, say yes to any write protected files. As you can see here, there were a few. And we'll move on to the next package. In this case, it is the API headers for the Linux 5.19.2 kernel. So to do that, we need to extract the kernel itself. So we do tar hyphen XVF, XVF Linux. It's gonna just gonna Go through and extract every single bit of Linux. Yep, cover a lot of files there. But that is the Linux 5.19.2 kernel in its entirety. Now that we've done that, we cd into the Linux kernel. We make Mr. Proper. And that what that's doing here is just exposing the API for the system's C library, glibc for in LFS to use. This is done by sanitizing various C header files that are skipped the Linux kernel source table, which we've just done. Now we need to extract the user visible kernels from the source, make the target headers install. Uh, recommended make target headers install can't be used because it requires rsync, which may not be available. The headers are first placed in user, then copied into the needed place. So it's just Move this, copy it, move it again. Well, move it, make it, move it. Problem solved. Well, make, move, make. And as we can see here, we do that. And now we can leave the directory, remove the directory, and move on to glibc, which is a 4.4 standard build unit. So what we want to do, tar hyphen xvf glibc dot tar dot xz the reason why it didn't tab immediately is because there is a patch file for that which will be which we'll have to use further on so now that we've extracted glibc we need to enter glibc uh, run this this is just for compliance later on get this to run Apply the patch as we saw here. The reason why it didn't work immediately is because there was the patch. Now we apply the patch. We enter the make direct. We enter the build directory as needed. We'll make it and then build it. And ensure that utilities are installed to user sbin, which is what we want. 
as we can see here, user s bin, make the make file from the configuration of options presented to us. And then we make it. Uh, during this stage, the following warning may appear. Uh, the missing or incompatible MSG FMT program is generally harmless. The MSG FMT program is part of the get text package, which the host distribution should, should provide. Uh, this, so what this warning here is just saying, hey, look, don't run this. It's saying, hey, look, there may be, there may be an issue when running, when, when building this package with more than one core. Come back and change this so it only uses one core if there are some issues. What I'm doing here is I'm just going to run it without any. I'm just going to run it on one core only. So to do that is just time make minus J1. J1, not J4. And then just hit enter and we will return once this is done making. And now that we have finished with the compilation of glibc, it recommends it gives us a big red warning here saying if the LFS variable is not set correctly and I'm building this as root the uh, as because I am building this as root the next command will install the newly built G, uh, glibc uh, to the host which is not what we want you are building as root so again we need to make sure if the LFS pro is not set properly and despite the recommendations you are building as root but because we are not building it as root and we're building it as the user and also we have the LFS variable set correctly. What we need to do is just install it in the correct place. Wait for that to finish installing and then we have to run this here which will fit, which will fix a hard coded path. It's nice to it provide all the fixes for us. Just makes life a bit easier. And then we will have to run this, which will then give us this response. Hopefully, if it gives us this response, that means what we have done with glibc has worked. And then we can move on. Now, install might take a bit, a bit longer, apparently. So we just have to. I was about to say we just have to wait, but it appears to be speeding up and picking up. So now that it's done, we need to. Run that, that'll fix that. Get this, and we should get an output of lib64 ld linux xa664 so2. And as we can see here, requesting program interpreter lib64 ld linux xa664 so2, lib64 ld linux xa x x x x a664 so2. Because apparently I can ma magic numbers out of thin air. Building packages in the next, next chapter will serve as an additional check that the tool chain has been built properly. If some package, uh, especially bit and utils pass two or GCC pass two fails to build, it is an indication that something has gone wrong with the previous bit and utils GCC or glibc installations. Uh, now that our cross tool chain is complete, finalize the installation of limits header. In doing for doing so, run a utility provided by the glibc devs, which we can do by just doing that. Problem source is just cd dot dot slash dot dot. Remove the directory. Say yes to everything that pops up. Play the screen. And we now need to just com compile the lib standard C plus plus. Uh, library from GCC. So it's tar hyphen XVF GCC. Wait for that to fly through. Again, it is a, it's, it's one of the larger packages to unpack, so it does take a little bit of time. CD into GCC, make the directory build, CD into the directory build, feed it the configuration for the make file this one is specific for the lib standard c++ library and then it's just because it's a 0.4 standard build unit it's just as simple as make make the library remove the things that aren't needed to be there so in this case now that we've made the configuration it is it is as simple as 
time make minus j4 this should fly through and not take too long at all once we've done that we'll just install the library remove the libtool archives because we don't want to cause any configuration well we don't want to cause any issues in the future and once we have done that we can move on so install the library and now remove the archive uh Loop tool archive files because they are harmful for cross compilation. Copy this, paste this in here, and now we're done for this video. I would like to thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, hit the like button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button. And if you'd like to say something, leave a comment and maybe give the subscribe button a little tickle. Anyway, I have been Nick. You have been amazing. I hope you have a good rest of your day. Goodbye.